When we stand in our yards, we can see the plants and flowers above ground, grasses, trees and roses. But it's truly the soil beneath our feet that allows those plants to grow. Here we've got a man-made cut. This allows us to observe the soil structure in relation to the plants on top. Now, this area here we've got our vegetation and you can see lots of small fibrous roots. These are the roots that take in the nutrient and this soil has got a structure to it. Individual small particles that are bound together. That structure has got cracks and fissures between them that allows the water and oxygen to get to the roots. Now as we go deeper, you get this change. This is a horizon across here. This has got nutrients in, this is the underlying subsoil. This has just got a few roots in it because it's uh, a difficult environment to grow in. Now, when you have somebody come to your yard and do work, landscape contractor, irrigation, pool, any of them, they'll bring machinery and equipment. They will run their equipment and machinery on this surface and this area gets squashed. No longer can water and air penetrate to that rooting zone. And that's why we spend a lot of time putting on artificial fertilizers and extra water to make our plants grow. Now, this is a man-made cut. Let's go and have a look at one in nature. Now that's a man-made cross-section. Here, we're gonna look at nature. Now above me, we've got plant growth. In this area, the brown soil, we've got the feeding zone. This is where all the tiny fibrous roots reside. And then below that, you can see the, see the clear strata of the subsoil. Now the point I want to make here is that all of the feeding roots are in this top 12 inches or so. They're not way down here in the subsoil. The fibrous roots take in the water, take in the nutrient and get it back to the plant. Now we're gonna explore this more by looking at some soil types and show you how they perform, what their characteristics are and how we can use them to help our plants grow. There are many different types of soil as we've just seen in those two cuts. Now I've got some samples with me here and I'm gonna show you how they work what their characteristics are, and most importantly, how you can fix them. Now, please don't think of dirt as dirt. There's so much more to it than that. There's animal life in there, worms and creatures. We've got fungus, we've got bacteria, we've got particle size of the soil itself. There's a water component, and there's also nutrients. So there's six or seven different features that make up a viable soil. Now, in front of me here, I've got our samples. This is a... Um, a subsoil, we saw this in the cut, it's underneath the topsoil, very, very dense, very, very hard, and not a lot of nutrient. There's not many roots can survive in this. Now, if you're in a new house, chances are the good soil has been scraped off and taken away, and this is what you're left with. Let me tell you, there is absolutely no shortcut with this soil. Digging a hole, sticking a plant in it, and hoping for the best will not work. The plant, the plant cannot grow in this. Now, this sample here is much more reminiscent of the top profile that we saw in those two cuts. It's got some very, very small pores, which allow water and oxygen to get to the roots. This is the good stuff. This is what we want. Now on this side, we've got some different samples of what are modified. Whenever you get water on the surface, together with pressure, either pedestrian or machine, the soils become mod modified, and this is a, a compacted plate. It's very, very hard, and water cannot pass through this way down here. What happens is it will pool and puddle, and it will run off, causing erosion. Now this is a, a clay ball that I made, squished it together, and then allowed it to dry in the sun. This is incredibly tough. I can't even, I can't even break it. I've got a few pieces to come off. Now you imagine a very, very small root growing down somehow and getting in contact with this. It's a very long time before this can release its nutrients. Now with modified soils, there is absolutely no substitute than to get a machine in and break this up. Now a tiller is the first thing that we would run to, but don't over till it. You don't want to beat it so much that it turns into a powder. You still want some particle sizes, small, medium and large. So this is our modified soil. Now this is the holy grail. This is what we have to have. This is organic matter. And I want to make out very clear here that it's still quite coarse. It's not a fine powder. And the coarseness is very important because it helps the soil breathe. 
Now, whenever you add organic matter to your soil, don't just sprinkle it on the surface and you're done with it. I mean, that is one way. But the best way to help your plants grow is to mix this what's called homogeneously, which is evenly and throughout the soil profile. You don't need much of this. With the absence of compaction and a little bit of this, your soil can have life breathed back into it. So that is the soil profile. We have to get water from the surface down. We have to allow for capillary action. We have to allow for percolation. And if you have hard soil like this, it's just not going to happen. Now, finally, once you've opened your soil up, the rainfall can come down. It can be fully absorbed into that soil profile, and you will have great success with your plants. One word of warning. If you have this, there is no substitute than a lot of hard work. But you can do it. For your garden show, this is Ian Cook.